So for today, we have the um, uh, webinar on the outlooks and trends in the installation market. So this is our second open webinar. A couple of weeks ago, we had a webinar on the construction industry. Today, we have the installation industry. And in two weeks time, we will have the home improvement uh, uh, industry. And our goal is to, uh, if there's a lot of positive feedback, to continue doing these open webinars once every so often, but then focusing on a certain specific topic. And for today, um, I'll shortly introduce USB. Then we go into the outlooks. What do we expect for the market? And then, of course, the key trends. As for our introduction uh, of our company, we are obviously a market research agency. We focus on conducting market research on the construction, installation, and home improvement market segments. So we're a fully market specialized providing our clients both with ad hoc tailor-made market research and a portfolio of ready-made reports, of which, of course, I will share uh, the information because the presentation is mostly based on that. Uh, active in the market for over 30 years as a market specialized agency. Now, as I mentioned, we will be focusing on uh, information coming from mostly two uh, of these multi-client monitors we offer. One is the European Mechanical Installation Monitor focusing on HVAC installers and plumbers. The other one is the European Electrical Installation Monitor focusing on electrical installers. In both cases, the interviews are done by phone and are based on a quite a significant sample set. For the electrical installers, we do 3,000 interviews by phone on an annual basis. And for the HVAC installers and plumbers, 2,600 interviews. Every quarter, a report is published about key marketing topics, purchase behavior, training needs, prefabrication, orientation, all of the important topics that, uh, uh, according to us, should matter to a marketeer active in this segment. So um, we also have, of course, a, a list of our customers. This is just a selection just to show you um, for whom we work and that we work throughout the business value chain. Now, with that out of the way, I would like to focus on our outlooks and prognosis for the upcoming time. Um, and I would like to start, of course, by giving the disclaimer that when you do prognosis and expectations, it's always like looking into a glass bowl. You do not know um, when a certain um, really significant market change appears. But besides these, uh, let's say, big changes that are unpredictable, our models have stood the test of time in the last 30 years and we're very confident um, in the predictions we make what direction is the market going now i would like to start first with let's say more of a general outlook for the construction industry um, so when we look at the total industry total construction industry including installation um, i always like to look at the architects first because they're in the early cycle of the business value chain so if we look at the architects order book developments, this is really important. If they get more work, it uh, means also more volume in two to three years. We clearly see that from 2021 onwards, um, the market was really on a high level. So this is the saldo architects that uh, report a uh, increase minus a decrease in their order book. So as long as it's a bit above the zero line, it means market growth in terms of order books. Um, what we do see is that since Q3 2022, there was a negative development and it seems like it's continuing uh, in 2023. So it's slightly below the zero line. This means that there are more architects that state that their order books are decreasing than the ones that state that it is increasing. Now, looking at another stakeholder, um, I would like to look at the contractors here. We did the same thing, although now we are looking at turnover. So the share of contractors reporting an increase of their turnover minus the share of contractors reporting a decrease. Now, what do we see here? In France, Germany, and Poland, there's a larger group of contractors that are experiencing a decrease in their turnover compared to uh, an increase. In the other countries, the net saldo is positive. This was asked H1 at the end of H1 2023. Now, if we look at their expectations for H2 2023, we can clearly see that except for the Netherlands and Spain, where the contractors are still positive, but the net saldo decreased, in all other countries, the contractors became more positive uh, regarding their turnover. 
uh, also even in Germany, where they went from a saldo of minus 6 to minus 4. Still negative, but less negative. And this is also seen in their order books, so the order books of the contractors. If we look at the majority of the countries, you do see a dip somewhere between 22 and 23. Um, but in most countries, after this dip, we see their order books increasing again. Now, based on this information and much more information like order book developments at other target groups, building permits and so on, we uh, have a future building volume predictions model. And here you can see uh, the results of this model, in this case for UK, where we look back and look at what did we uh, uh, predict and what was, looking backwards, the actual output according to Eurostat. So you see this model is quite well able to capture the general movement in the market. So let's start with this year. This year, the overall construction market has decreased in Europe, except for Spain and Italy. And it's important to note that we are comparing 2023 with 2022. So compared to 2022, we see a negative development in the total building volume being produced, um, except for Spain and Italy. Now, there are some key reasons for this decline. So um, if we look at one of the most important reasons, it is the high interest rate. We see that especially new build is decreasing in Europe, uh, in European countries, and this is mainly due to a high interest rate, thus higher finance costs for new builds. But we also have a severe labor shortage problem, which is also increasing the cost in this case for labor. We come from a period with increases in higher material prices, thus higher material costs. And if you combine that, um, it is really a very um, negative uh, driver for new builds. Furthermore, we had, of course, a lot more uncertainty regarding the economic developments. And as I said, we are comparing here 2023 with 2022, and 2022 was still a peak year. Now, does this mean that the future is really dark and cloudy? Um, in our opinion, no. If we look at all of the data we collect, we clearly see that for 2024, we expect more positive developments, except for Germany, where the development is still negative. Again, we are comparing 2024 here with 2023 figures you just saw. So for 2024, we expect minor growth in most European markets, except for Germany. And the key drivers for this increase in growth after a decrease in 2023 is that we still have a very high affordable housing shortage. We see that the renovation market remains strong. We see that in urbanized environments, uh, a lot more new build is taking place. So the continued urbanization is increasing um, the new build that is uh, has been declining for, uh, let's say, the last year and a half. And of course, we cannot ignore the sustainability improvements that are already made or still need to be done in the upcoming years it will also be a driver for growth. So this is a general construction industry. But what about the installation sector? Well, for the installation sector, I would first like to start with HVAC installers, HVAC installers and plumbers. Again, we ask them the question, do you have an increase minus a decrease in your turnover? So what you see here is the saldo, the percentage saldo. We asked this question in Q3, end of Q3 2023. And we can clearly see that in all countries we measure, except for Poland, there is a increase and a larger group of HVAC installers and plumbers are reporting their turnovers increasing rather than decreasing. Again, only Poland is negative. Now, if we ask them for the expectations for Q4, we can see that uh, in all countries there is growth. More installers are becoming more positive, except for the Netherlands and Germany. In the Netherlands, slightly less installers are experiencing or expecting higher turnover. And in Germany, it dropped significantly from 31% net saldo to 17% net saldo. Situation in Poland is improving, but is still uh, slightly negative. So more uh, installers report still a decrease than an increase. Now, if we look at the order book of the HVAC installers, you can clearly see uh, it's quite volatile. So um, there are quite volatile shifts up and down. 
but generally speaking the order books will remain on a relatively high level approximately five months on european average we see the highest order book of hvac installers and plumbers in the netherlands with 6.9 months now looking at the electrical side of the installation market uh, again they are outperforming the general construction industry if we look at their turnover developments again the saldo but you can see that again poland has a negative saldo and in all countries the saldo is positive although in the netherlands germany and france there is only a slightly larger group of installers reporting an increase in turnover rather than a decrease now fast forward to the expectations in q4 2023 and we see that the uh, expectation of electrical installers in the UK significantly worsened. Still, there's a larger group expecting an increase than a decrease, but that group became smaller. And in Germany, uh, we see from a slight positive developments, more negative developments, a minus of 1% in saldo. So we do see these two countries uh, deteriorating uh, a bit when it comes to the expectations. Now, it might not be surprising that uh, if we look at their order books, we see the order book books of electrical installers in the UK dropping and in Germany dropping significantly. Now, this measurement was taken in Q3. And as you've all maybe seen or read in the news, of course, photovoltaics, uh, especially, for example, in the Netherlands, took quite a big dive in terms of the market demand. Um, this probably will be visible in the next report we do for the Netherlands, but it's also a factor in other countries. But overall, still, it must be said that the order book levels are relatively high, with still the highest order book on average for German electrical installers. Now, what can we predict or what do we think for the future? So um, for the future, we expect the installation market at large, so electrical and HVAC, to continue its growth, but in a more sustained and slower pace than we've seen in the last two years, which were, uh, again, really peak years. So we do expect the growth, but it will be at a slower pace than in the last couple of years. And why? Well, the growth will be there because of the demand for and push towards more sustainability. It's not just the energy transition, but also legislation kicking in, the Green Deal, um, and these kind of developments. Key driver will remain energy uses reduction and CO2 reduction. And the majority of the growth can be expected in these segments, especially for the renovation. Now, depending on the product category you're in, we also do see, and this is hindering, let's say, the transla translation of the growth in actual for example, purchases of products uh, uh, from the wholesaler to the manufacturer, is that the inventory levels for many product groups are on a very high level. After the Corona crisis outbreak and the war in Ukraine and strong increases we saw in prices, installers, but especially wholesalers, increased their stock inventory strongly. And this inventory still needs to be cleared for some product categories. And this might result in somewhat lower sales for manufacturers from for some time ahead. Now, another thing why we say, well, it will continue its growth, but at a slower pace is that the strong sense of urgency that was in the market after the outbreak of the war in Ukraine has decreased somewhat. Oil and gas prices are relatively stable, and we clearly see that the high cost of, let's say, uh, for uh, private homeowners to make the transition is hindering the adoption rate. We see that the early adopters have switched already to heat pumps, PV panels, these kind of things. But the early majority is up now, is up next. And the high cost, the interest rate, uh, labor shortage are blocking a strong adoption speed. And finally, maybe the biggest blocker and the biggest issue in the construction industry and installation industry, to my opinion, will be labor shortage. And the labor shortages are already quite severe. And our prediction is that these uh, labor shortages will only increase in severity. So that is our forecast for the general construction industry and the installation segment within that. Now, as said for this presentation, I would like to focus on five key trends, but more on a high level. In future presentations, webinars, um, if there's an interest uh, from uh, uh, from you, basically, we will dive into individual topics more deeply.
but for today we will give you a helicopter overview so five trends the most important one in my opinion labor shortage will be covered digitalization building information modeling mostly sustainability buying behavior and service and training needs so let's start with labor shortage as said for me this is probably the biggest blocker in the business value chain of the installation market both for the hvac side and the electrical side and one of the big problems is that labor productivity hasn't increased significantly especially if you compare it with let's with let's say the global industry so from a productivity increase perspective there is limited to almost no increase in productivity and besides these lower levels of productivity increases we are also faced in europe with unfavorable demographics meaning we have an aging society and meaning that the average age of workers in the construction industry is really high and in the upcoming five to ten years we will see a big outflow of uh, workers in the industry that are now let's say 50 55 they will start outflowing relatively quickly and um, increasing the labor shortage that's already in the market so how big of a problem is it if we look at the HVAC installers and plumbers, we clearly see that labor shortage is a serious problem with six out of 10 HVAC installers experiencing serious labor shortages. If we look at the individual countries, installers in Germany report the highest problems with seven out of 10 HVAC installers stating that they are severely hindered by labor shortage. In most other countries, it's above 50% and also in the Netherlands, it's quite, Netherlands and Belgium, it's quite close to 70%. From the countries covered in this research, France seems to have the least problems, but even here, four out of 10 HVAC installers are struggling with labor shortages. Now for the electrical installers, more or less the same image on a European level, about half of all electrical installers are facing labor shortages. And what's clear to see here is that the highest labor shortages are reported in Spain, in the Netherlands and in Poland, and again, the lowest in France. Now, we also asked the question, do you think labor shortage will be resolved in the upcoming five years? And the majority of the installers, be it HVAC or electrical, are uh, disagreeing with, uh, are agreeing with the statement and state that yes, we think labor shortage will not be resolved in the upcoming five years. And we've also asked them the question, well, what ways do you think that you will be able to think of or execute to deal with these labor shortages. So the installers themselves, how should they deal with labor shortages? And we asked for a top five, but I put the top three in here because there was almost only one real strong answer that was given by a large group of installers, and that is higher non-qualified staff. So the number one uh, uh, way they think they can uh, uh, deal with labor shortages is higher non-qualified staff, which will have strong implications for their training and service needs. Um, I'll come to that in a second. Now, what are our expectations when it comes to labor shortage? What will the future hold? So, we think that the problems will only become more uh, severe and bigger. Why? Again, demographics. Uh, the European average uh, for professionals in the uh, installation sec sector, the average age is about almost 50 years. And this will mean that we will see a large group outflowing in the upcoming years. Furthermore, the inflow is severely limited on the one hand due to unattract uh, unattractiveness of the industry itself, an image problem. And on the other hand, we also see that there are other sectors also faced with a high labor shortage, in fact, almost all sectors in the uh, European construction. So there's a fight for, let's say, youngsters to attract them to the respective industries. Now, we do not think that even though there's a lot of attention for this, the increase of workers for the installation market will increase significantly in the upcoming five years. Furthermore, there is uh, uh, the tendency for more complexity in the installation industry. Um, the installations themselves, technologies, building designs are getting more and more complex. And this, in fact, is decreasing the productivity of installers. Why? Well, for example, the best uh, uh, example I can give is, for example, uh, the installation of boilers. 
a good installer would install um, two uh, gas boilers maybe a day but when it comes to installing heat pumps it takes at least two to three days and sometimes even more so also there you'll see a decrease in productivity due to higher uh, installation time and finally you could say well what about efficiency gains yes there are products being more easy to install systems to be uh, designed with installation efficiency in mind but in our opinion even this increase in efficiently uh, efficiency won't match or overcome the main drivers that is decreasing the labor pool available in the upcoming five years now for the second trend uh, we look at digitalization and we, when, when we look at digitalization i like to look at bim because i think building information modeling is really a key indicator on how digital the industry is becoming now of course, BIM is most used by architects. On a European level, 44% of all architects are BIM users. And we've seen that BIM adoption rate amongst um, the architects has increased strongly over the last couple of years. But what about the other target groups? Well, if we look at contractors, we already see the share of BIM users dropping significantly. And if we look at HVAC installers and electrical installers, this percentage drops even further. So you can make the conclusion that the deeper you dive into the business value chain of the installation industry or construction industry at large, you see that the share of BIM users is decreasing. Now, if we plot, let's say the development of uh, the usage of BIM amongst HVAC installers over time, you'll see that this growth rate is really slow. 2018, 7% BIM users, 2020, still 7%, 2022, 9%. And our prognosis for 2027 is approximately 15% of all HVAC installers will be using BIM. Now, if we look at the electrical installers, a similar image arises. 7% 2018, 7% 2020, then an increase to 9%, and finally 10% with the latest measurement, uh, the report is just out, uh, uh, amongst uh, BIM for BIM usage amongst electrical installers. Again, prognoses are approximately 15% in uh, a couple of years' time. Now, this does not really paint the full picture because for building information and modeling usage, size really does matter. The bigger the company is, the higher the percentage of BIM users. For example, companies up to four employees, we only see 3% BIM users. 5 to 14, this doubles to 6%, and the biggest companies, more than 15 employees, there we already see that a quarter of all of the installers, in this case HVAC installers, are BIM users. Now, if an installer works uh, with BIM, typically they engineer and install the system. So they do both the engineering and the installation. Um, in 29% of the case, they only install the system, which another company has designed in BIM. But the vast majority, when a project is done in BIM, they do both the engineering and the installation. And they have some clear expectations towards manufacturers in relation to building information modeling. I've put in here the top five. And the top five is quite closely related. It's providing 3D BIM objects. It's making BIM product information available and open source, help them to engineer in BIM, provide product information or specifications for BIM and support and training. So it's really still, let's say, quite simple uh, uh, things they uh, really need help with. One is getting the uh, files and getting the files in the right format in the right place, and B, really helping them either to engineer in BIM or support and train them. So what are our future expectations for the BIM usage amongst installers? Well, overall, the future of digitalization and BIM does look bright. BIM usage will continue its increase uh, as it's being slowly adopted through lower levels of the business value chain. But also the software is becoming easier, the software is becoming cheaper, and um, there are new ways, uh, new technologies, which makes it much easier, much more easy for a installation company to start working with BIM. Furthermore, in the construction industry, we do see the trend towards more prefabrication. And when it comes to prefabrication, there is a strong correlation with BIM usage. 
So the more prefab that will be applied in the overall construction installation industry means that more installers will be forced to use BIM. Furthermore, we see a lot of internal pressure, especially with bigger installation companies to reduce failure cost. And this is driving them towards more BIM adoption, but also external pressure legislation will continue to drive the adoption rates. And then finally, uh, sustainability also plays a role because the higher demands for sustainability, life cycle analysis, tracking of the materials um, will increase BIM adoption as well, because a BIM model is really suited for these kind of uh, um, things to be taken into account in the design. Now, this is a nice bridge to the next trend we want to um, um, show you, sustainability. Now, I always like to start talking about sustainability with this image. It's a little bit outdated and used a lot, but still, I think it's quite important to show that the construction installation industry is getting attention um, um, because of their, let's say, big part of the CO2 emissions that they are responsible for. So if you would add up building operations and building material and construction, you would be close to 40% of all global CO2 emissions um, being uh, produced by the industry. And especially when it comes to building operations, yeah, this is of course a part where the installation plays a major role. Now, Given that fact, it's not strange that sustainability is taken into account quite often in the projects of HVAC installers and electrical installers. So we asked them for the average percentage of projects in which any kind of sustainability influence takes place. And you can see that um, mostly in, uh, uh, in most countries, uh, it's about 50%. Um, you clearly see that, for example, in Germany, um, we see the lowest amount of sustainability uh, taken into account in projects and on average the highest uh, uh, in the Netherlands and the other countries are somewhere in between. It's also interesting to see that in some countries sustainability is taken more into account on the electrical installation side whilst in other countries it's more the HVAC installers that have a higher average percentage of projects in which sustainability takes place but overall it's on a quite high level and growing now the demand and willingness to pay for sustainability is um, higher slightly higher for uh, electric for uh, hvac installers than for electrical installers so we asked the question to HVAC installers, to what degree our business customers or end customers are asking for and willing to pay for sustainability. So in both cases, about 43% of the clients of HVAC installers are asking and willing to pay for sustainability. And then you've got a, 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 a rather large group, especially amongst end consumers that's asking for it, but not willing to pay. And only a small group that's not asking for it at all. With the electrical installers, as I said, it's slightly lower than we see with HVAC installers, uh, approximately 30% uh, between the two uh, groups of business customers and end customers. And also the share of clients that is not asking for sustainability at all is significantly larger with electrical installers than with HVAC installers. Now, why is the demand higher amongst HVAC installers? I think it's quite logical, um, again, heat pumps in the last two, uh, one and a half, two years really has been driving, let's say, uh, uh, the share of sustainability in projects. In fact, if you ask the uh, uh, HVAC installers, again, about 50% of all of their projects on the European level take sustainability into account. Heat pumps, photovoltaics, the number two uh, sustainable products that are most asked for. Now, when it comes to um, what is actually most installed, most used installation products in sustainable solutions, we see heat pumps are number one, and then the number two, three, and four are quite closely together, and maybe surprisingly, uh, number two, installers mention gas boilers and gas or water heaters. So um, it's mostly then more efficient, newer products, but it's quite striking that they mentioned this on the number two spot, albeit with a big distance to heat pumps, as most used installation products in sustainable solutions. 
if we dive into the heat pumps, um, the vast majority, according to installers of heat pumps that are being installed, are air sourced heat pumps. Now, if we look at uh, electrical installers, we ask the question, um, what installation products are mainly being used or chosen in your projects when sustainable solutions are requested? So the number one answer is LED lighting. Um, they mentioned that the most, closely followed by photovoltaics. But also interesting, energy management systems, home automation, battery storage, and EV charging, they make up the top five on a European level. Um, again, there are strong country differences here. Um, the full reports, these are given, but I just wanted to give you the highlight on a European level. Now, what are our future expectations for sustainability? Well, we think the sustainability train will not be stopped, but it might not be going as quick as expected. So even though we think that sustainability will be a driver for the market for years to come, it might not be the sudden revolution that uh, was thought of, let's say, one, one and a half year ago, but rather it's slow and gradual evolution. It will increase because legislation and overall attention has increased. It will lead to more demand. And of course, the energy transition will also push the market forward at a greater pace. However, as we already noted before, it is clear that the sense of urgency has dropped somewhat. And you already see this, for example, in, let's say, heat pump sales. They are stabilizing instead of continuing the rapid growth. Furthermore, the high cost of, of the construction installation sector itself, labor, materials, financing, so the interest rate, uh, might slow down the willingness to invest and thus the adoption rate, especially as now the early majority needs to make the transition. Now, I would like to share with you some insights on purchase behavior. And when it comes to purchase behavior, we have looked at uh, a couple of channels, specialized wholesale and hardware stores, manufacturers, DIY stores, and pure online. And on a European level, it's clear to see that electrical installers are quite traditional. So 96% of the installers are spending 75% uh, of their share of wallet at the specialized wholesale. In terms of share of wallet, the number two is direct supply from manufacturers with 9% share of wallet. Then we have pure online, 5% of their share of wallet, but it's only 26% uh, of uh, electrical installers that use this channel. And then finally, DIY stores with 4% share of wallet. What's interesting to see is, yes, they're quite traditional, but they do spend more via pure online than HVAC installers. Because if we look at the HVAC installers, they are maybe even more traditional. 77% of the share of wallet is spent at specialized wholesalers and hardware stores. 10% direct supply from manufacturers, 3% pure online, 2% DIY store. Now, this is on a European level, and I just want to highlight this is the distribution per country for electrical installers, that there are significant country differences. For example, in the UK, you see the highest share of wallet for pure online. I say highest, it's only 7%, but it's higher compared to the other countries. If you look at Germany, for example, we see the highest share of the share of wallet going via the manufacturers, direct supply, and DIY store, 10 and 13% respectively. And in Poland, they are, let's say, the most traditional if you consider the share of wallet spent at the specialized wholesale at 80%. Interestingly enough, um, the German market has the lowest share of wallet for specialized wholesale, and of course, to a degree, this is the case uh, um, of because of the, let's say, high level of uh, direct supply. If we look at the HVAC installers, direct supply, again, the highest in Germany. If we look at the share of wallet going to the specialized wholesale, it's the highest in France, but closely followed by Poland. Again, installers in the UK have the highest share of wallet for pure online, 8%. And DIY store for HVAC installers is a channel that's not often used, but the highest share of wallet, 3%, we can find in Poland. Now, you would say, well, your online sales are a bit uh, low. That's correct. But if we look, for example, at online ordering at the traditional specialized wholesale, there we see some significant growth in the share of online. Dark blue represents traditionally telephone fax, email, sales rep uh, when visiting the store. 
online is via the website webshop and then in the Netherlands uh, and Germany specifically, we already see a very high share of orders being uh, uh, put in online versus traditionally. In the other countries, it's significantly lower, but it is growing and it's growing quite fast. So they are ordering online more, but they're just not ordering uh, much more at pure online stores. So what are our predictions for the purchase channels used? Well, for the future, the purchase channels used, in our opinion, will remain quite traditional, but with a greater emphasis on online ordering and delivery, but from the traditional channels. So um, mostly the biggest share of wallets will continue to go through the specialized wholesale. And if there's any main challenger, if you can call it that, of the, let's say, dominant position of the wholesale, it seems to be direct supply via manufacturers, which has been slowly growing over time. What has not really shown a strong uh, growth is pure online. And with pure online, of course, uh, for example, Amazon, they are not gaining much momentum yet. And I think it's not also something we expect for the future. And as said, online ordering at traditional purchase points has increased strongly. And we think it will continue to do so, especially with the high labor shortage and high uh, full order books. Now for the final part, and I'm quite obvious that we are a little bit over time because we had to start uh, uh, again, but I do think this is an important topic. Training and service needs, I think, are very relevant and very important and will be, become even more important in the upcoming years. I would like to remind you that labor shortage is a big issue and the number one uh, solution, according to the installers themselves, is to hire non-qualified staff. That staff needs to be trained and they will have higher service needs. So this is really going to be a very important, uh, let's say, tool to get customer intimacy, but even maybe uh, also additional sources of revenue. Now, on a European level, when it comes to uh, services, engineering support seems to be the most interesting service according to HVAC installers. We ask much more, almost 16 services. I just put in the number one here. In Belgium, in the Netherlands, and in Germany, engineering support scores the highest. In France, it's uh, uh, engineering support together with tools and apps for checking product availability. The UK, uh, the number one answer is real-time installation support and in Poland, installation trainings in person. If we ask the same question for electrical installers, I've put in the top two here. Um, we see in Belgium, Spare parts, tools for checking product availability. Netherlands, tools and apps for checking product availability. Spare parts, also in Poland, number one spare parts. Germany, tools and apps for checking product availability and spare parts. Um, in France, also tools and apps for checking product availability and real-time installation support. And just with like with HVAC installers in the UK, real-time installation support is number one. Tools and apps for checking product availability number two. So for in electrical installers, it's more about product availability and spare parts. Now, another important thing is, of course, training. If you hire unqualified staff, they need to be trained. We asked electrical installers, uh, for HVAC installers, a new report is coming out soon on training needs. Uh, electrical installers uh, uh, in the UK attend trainings most often. Almost 100%, almost all electrical installers attend training. In Germany, the participation levels of training is the lowest, with 55% attend trainings. Now, it's interesting that the bigger the company, the more often trainings are followed. And maybe an open door, but younger installers follow more trainings than older installers. Now, we also ask them for the mode of training. And interestingly, still, the majority of the trainings followed are face-to-face. This is the case for all countries, except for the UK, where the majority of trainings that have been followed are online. Now, what's interesting is this is the current situation. So what's the share of trainings they followed online versus face-to-face? -face. We also ask them, what is the best topic for training and the best way of getting the training? Online, face-to-face, -face, or no preference? And here we see some differences because there's much more strong preference for face-to-face -face training. In the UK, the top two is new regulation and installation. Both of them preferred face-to-face. -face. In Germany, number one is new product innovations and new regulations. 
of which new product innovations clearly is much more preferred face to face, but for new, regu uh, new regulations, they have no preference. In France, new regulations, energy efficiency and sustainability, number one and two, again, the main preference is face to face. In Poland, it's new regulation and installation, with only installation have, having no preference in the training method, new regulations preferred face to face. Belgium, new product innovations, new regulations, again, a higher preference for face to face trainings. In the Netherlands, it's exactly the same new product innovations, new regulations, and face to face training preference. And then we come to the only country where, in the top two, we see a a type of training or topic that is mainly preferred online, and that is energy efficiency and sustainability. In Spain, 57% mainly prefer online trainings on this topic, and the number two is troubleshooting with 47%, but that's mainly preferred face-to-face. -face. Now, for the final look into the glass bowl, what do we expect for services and training? Well, as I already said, I think it will be really a crucial development. The number one response to combat labor shortage, according to the installers, is hiring unqualified staff and training them. They will need help. They will need help from manufacturers, wholesalers, or professional sector organizations. Furthermore, as old but highly skilled installers are replaced by youngsters with less experience, there will be a strong need for training and services for years to come especially services that help installers to work more quickly, efficiently, and in some cases, even including taking over part of their work. They are now more open for manufacturers and perhaps also wholesalers to take some tasks from them so that they can focus on more new installation. And finally, with all of the new technologies hitting the market, building information modeling, but also new technologies like heat pumps, the need for training and services are higher than ever. As I said, key component to increase customer loyalty and it opens the door for paid services and thus new revenue income. 